Not often that I get to chat to a uh, multiple world champion right here in the World Sports Rap studio on the show. So uh, obviously we're going to start off with some basic boxing questions because uh, I just want to know. There's just so much that this man knows about yeah. what's happening in boxing. And, and Brian, I think the obvious question first up, your view, the state of boxing in South Africa. The state of boxing is quite good right now, Mark. At the end of the day, we've got a lot of youngsters coming through the ranks. Um, started off, obviously, guys like Floyd Mayweather created a big hype in boxing worldwide. The highest paid sportsman in the world in, in any sport and is a boxer. And a lot of the South African youngsters are, are coming through the ranks now. You know, Obviously, uh, the economy is not great and guys do need the money and guys need to fight. And they, they've chosen boxing again. You know, in the 80s, boxing was huge in, in, in my time. And uh, I, I see a, a trend again. I see the, the guys coming through the ranks again. So boxing pretty strong in South Africa right now. We're just looking at what's been happening on um, SABC, what's happening on Supersport at the moment. A lot of small community, local uh, big fights, if I can call it mm. that, happening around the country, uh, whether it be down in Cape Town, whether it be in Durban, right up here. Let's talk about the Feast in the East that took place this last weekend. Mm. Um, if I just look at what's happening on the box, on the, on the, on the screen, because that's literally an indicator of how big a sport is growing. It seems to be on the up from where it was, let's call it 10 years ago. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like you say, I mean, there's, there's tournaments happening everywhere. East London's a hub of boxing, uh, PE is starting to do boxing. I mean, I commentator in, in Springs on the weekend in Quatema, and I'm doing Empress Palace this weekend with Kevin Arena and our tour man for Golden Gloves. Um, boxing is, is busy, yeah. We've, we've got lots of tournaments all over the show. There's lots of small promoters coming through. There's obviously Rodney Berman, Golden Gloves, a big promoter. And uh, definitely it's pumping, it's exciting. You know, the, the world is, of boxing is happening. And like we always talk about the Mayweathers and the Pacquiao's of the world. I mean, look at the heavyweight division. These guys are signing for stupid money. It's like monopoly money, but um, yeah, boxing is pumping. I was just going to ask you that. The global scene, and I, I think you've answered that question already, the global scene is definitely on the up. I mean, if we look at boxing, a classic way of judging whether boxing is doing well is looking at that heavyweight division and that heavyweight division has got literally any combat sports fan talking right now whether it's brazil fury uh, aj whether it's uh, uh, deontay wilder everybody's talking about what's happening in the heavyweight division yeah exactly you know we uh, like we said off air i mean we thought tyson fury is pretty average which i still don't rate him as a great but why are we talking about it at the end of the day he got off his back twice against uh, Deontay Wilder and, and he got a draw and he, he, he outboxed Wilder for the first seven, eight rounds. And the guys are signing for stupid money. They're getting paid $100 million to sign on for TV networks. But it's, but it's, good. it's good for sport. It's good for the world. The world is talking about the heavyweight division. The world is talking about the welterweight division. And the world is talking boxing. That's, that's what I love. You know, as a former boxer, you're talking about Canelo Alvarez signing for $365 million. I mean, that's madness. That's just 11 fights. Yeah, and then, um, and then Golovkin has just signed for $30 million. That's not their purse money. That's just from the TV network. Then you get a guy like Tyson Fury signing for $100 million. So it's monopoly money. These guys won't be able to spend the money, but it's, it's creating hype in boxing and in sport, and that's what I love. So uh, if we have to look at uh, where you think boxing is going to go, I know we spoke very, very briefly before we stepped into the studio. Combat sports seems to have gone back to its good old days, bare knuckle fighting. Is the, are we going back to where fighting actually started from, the rawest form? Yeah, possibly. You know, like a city, I'm, I'm a purist, you know, I only like boxing. Uh, I, don't, I don't like any of the, the, the other combat sports. But it, it's, at, least, at least kind of, we kind of getting back to barbaric, let's call it, where people are starting to like bare knuckle and, and everything else. And, but yeah, it's, it's all part of entertainment and it's, it's part of life. But for me personally, I only love boxing. A question that uh, I didn't ask you outside. Um, uh, I wanted to keep this one a bit of a surprise. Um, <laughs> if you were to look at, I know we spoke a little bit about it, but if you were to look at the champions of today, and uh, compare to what you had to go through as a champion of yesterday. Is it harder being a champion of yesterday? Or is it easier? No, I don't think it's specifically harder, Mark. I think it's just different. Um, you know, it's going to sound like I'm bragging or living in the past, but I think 
you know, us fighters from the 80s, I mean, you look at the, the middleweight division alone, you had Chugara Leonard, you had Roberto Duran, you had Marvin Hagley, you had Tommy Hearns, the heavyweight division in the 70s, uh, you had Ali Foreman, Fraser, Norton. In South Africa, you had Mitchell and you had Tobella and you had Kerry Kutsia and, and the rest. Um, I just somehow feel like you, you don't have those big personalities anymore. And it's, uh, so boxing's not as, as great as it used to be for me personally. But it's, it's growing and, and, and who knows where we'll be in, in a year or two or three with the kind of money that's out there. I think that that's going to attract everybody on the planet that can fight that wants to fight. So <laughs> I think, yeah, I think it's going to be back to where it was. Talking about fighters or not knowing where things are going to be in a couple of years' time, I look back at your career, um, quite, a, quite, a, quite a stellar career by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and one of the main reasons why you're sitting right here, because we could talk boxing all night, <laughs> is, is, is you are going to be on stage very shortly, not in your first iteration, because you've done this before, but you're going to be on stage performing in front of hopefully packed out um, audiences, packed out houses, without gloves. Yeah, without gloves, yeah. It's different, I had to see a box in Tokyo on stage. It's not easy, I must tell you. I did The Road Warrior with Tim Pullman, wrote uh, The Road Warrior, and I, was, I did a one-man play at Empress Palace. When was that? A year, and a, a year and a half ago. Okay. And, and now I'm back on stage, I'm doing Eye of the Tiger with Clint and Co, the band. And it's, it's kind of a one-man show as well. Clint, Clint's gonna back me with the music. But I'm doing my, host, my whole show and I'm quite proud of it. Um, myself and my partner, Charlene, decided about a year ago, let's do it again, you know, because uh, we only did three shows at Empress. So I wrote my own show, which I mean, it, it's what I gave Tim Bloom and it is my show. And, and I'm, I'm gonna talk about my whole life, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show all the videos of the great footage of 33 years ago when I beat Alfredo Lane at Sun City and 30 years ago when I beat Tony Lopez. I want the people to see that because I was never able to fight in this country, in my own country. And so I want to talk about my career and I want to show the people I'm quite excited about Eye of the Tiger. That's going to be at the Barnyard Theatres from the 30th of March, so it's two weeks time. We're starting at Empress Palace, uh, a matinee show at 2 p.m. and then we're going to Silver Star Casino uh, that evening. So very exciting, it's my, not my first uh, stage play, but uh, nerve wracking as well, you know, for, for a boxer to get on stage and talk specifically. Um, but I'm excited, yeah. You know, I'm a commentator and I'm, I'm used to a mic, but it's, it's different on stage, it's very tough. Comparison, I've got to ask the comparison question. Getting your, uh, your hands wrapped, getting the gloves on, getting ready to step into the cage. I'm oh, sorry, to the ring, you were, cages went around yeah. in your days. Just getting ready to step into the ring. Compare that with getting that voice ready, getting the nerves to settle before stepping out on stage. I mean, is there a comparison at all? Well, there is, you know, because it, it, it is nerve-wracking. I mean, you've still got to go out there and you've got to make it happen. And in the fight game, sometimes I think boxing was even a bit easier than what, what I'm doing now as almost a 50 HL. Because um, boxing, you, you prepare four hours a day. I train four hours a day. And when you get into the ring and the first punch is thrown, the adrenaline's pumping and you, you forget about everything. And it's time to fight. It's time to keep your hands up and, you, you know, defend yourself at all times. And, and you've put your four hours a day in training. Now it's, uh, it's different, you're getting on stage and you, you're a lot older and you, you're talking to, to a different audience. But it's, uh, it's exciting, I'm, I'm glad that I can tell my story. As I said, I was never allowed to fight in my own country, which is unheard of that a sportsman can't fight in his own country. But because of apartheid and because of what is happening in the country, I wasn't allowed to fight here. So I accepted it and I fought 13 world title fights at the country. And now I'm on stage and I can tell my story to the people and I'm looking forward to it. Looking at the build-up to the show, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I have the Tiger going to be showing at uh, Silver Star Barnyard as well as uh, Empress Palace Barnyard on March the 30th. Tickets are still available, 150 bucks a person. Yeah, it's pretty reasonable, 150 bucks. You're not going to get popcorn with that, but uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a 150 a ticket, that's what we're charging. And uh, yeah, you can see Clinton, Clinton Co is going to be great. You know, Clint came up with, a, with the name I have the Tiger, he's a mate of mine. We've known each other forever. I've been watching his shows forever. He's, he became a ring announcer as well. We've been to Monte Carlo together where he sang for The Princess and I was the commentator for boxing there for Triple G Golovkin. So we go back a long way and we decided to do this together as well. And he's gonna do a, a great job. You know, he's gonna sing I Have the Tiger, he's gonna sing Simply the Best. 
he's going to sing the boxer. So for 150 rand, I think people are going to get value. Absolutely, but I think we must have, must mention that uh, there is a parental guidance that is advised for the show. Is that correct? Um, not really. No. Not really. Okay. No. So you can bring I, the kids along. I only swear three times, but I, I can I can bring it down to two. <laughs> no, 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 definitely. It's a, it, it's it's for the whole family, definitely. Right. So if you haven't got your tickets, get along to uh, www.barnyardtheatres.co.za. Book your tickets online or call any one of the uh, Empress Palace or a Silver Star Barnyard Theatres to book your tickets right away. Brian, I'm looking forward to the show. Um, I've got to do a bit of juggling. Thanks, Mark, have you bought your ticket? I Are have. you taking one of the freebies at the tent? No, I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm joking. Not. No, not at all. By um, the way, sorry to interrupt you. Yes. So that, that's for the Silver Star Barnyard Theatres. Yeah, because you're giving away a table for 10. A table for 10. Yeah. I'm prepared to throw in a table for 10 as well for the matinee show at Empress Palace. Oh, my word. So there you go, listeners. If you just heard that, we have two tables for 10. One to Silver Star, one to Empress Palace. So make sure you get your answers in before the end of the show. We're going to be drawing those winners before the end of the show. Make sure you get them in on our WhatsApp number. Let me just repeat that number for you now. 064-536-8228 or send an SMS on 44008. We will make sure that we announce those winners um, here at the end of the show and also we'll confirm it all tomorrow during the course of the day on social media. Two tables for 10. There you go. Brian Mitchell's giving away another table for 10. Thank you so much, Brian. Pleasure. I will be there to sign autographs as well for 100 Zimbabwean dollars. <laughs> well, that makes it about two and a half cents. Yeah. Bring that two and a half cents along. Goes no, a long I'm way. definitely there. I'm going to be signing autographs uh, during the interval, afterwards as well. Be signing boxing gloves to the fans. Um, we're hoping to make it, make it a great show. And Barnyard's done a great job by making it happen, marketing it. So I, I thank Kim and Duck from Barnyard for, for making this happen. And uh, if, uh, if all goes well on the 30th of March, is this a potential new career for Brian Mitchell? Um, well, not necessarily a new career. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily a new career, but definitely the, the barnyard has spoken about a tour, which is going to be awesome. Uh, we're going to do, we're going to do Durban, we're going to do Cape Town, we're going to do a lot of the big barnyard theatres. So yeah, thank you to the barnyard for for helping me make my next part of my my dream and this part of my life uh, happen. Absolutely, cannot cannot wait. I think I'm really looking forward to the event. But Brian, I can't let you go away so quickly, so easily. A lot of big boxing taking place this weekend. Yes, Kevin Arena. Yeah, Kevin Arena versus Ottoman. Correct. Your thoughts, um, and obviously your thoughts as a boxing aficionado. I want you to write off Super Sport. I want you to write <laughs> off all of that. Your thoughts on this fight? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm a Golden Glove spokesperson and a Super Sport commentator, but I actually did the pre-fight medical and weigh-in today. So, and, and then yesterday I, I did a media day with Man at the Boysons Gym. Man's looking good. He's 15 and 0. He's from Germany. He's actually originally from Kazakhstan, but he but he lives in Germany. Um, if you're 15 and 0, you're not 15 and 0 for nothing. He's he's come to win the world title. But Kevin's looking good. You know, Kevin's 21 and 1, and Kevin's uh, has had a good career. Uh, I expect Kevin to win the fight definitely. Okay. And then the other big fight on uh, sort of on the world stage, unbeaten welterweight world champion Errol Spence Jr taking on undefeated four division champion Mikey Garcia. Wow. Going up two weight divisions yeah. to win another title. So then I think there's two questions for me here. Does Garcia stand a chance? And two, what is this BS that's taking place in combat sports where everyone wants to win damn well everything? Well, yeah, Garcia moving up two divisions is, is a problem. Gar Garcia is a superstar, is a legend. Spence is a legend. I would say Spence has, has got to be the favourite because he's the bigger guy. But you can't, can't, you can't count uh, Garcia out. I mean, it's, it's a really brilliant fight. And we're going to watch it Sunday morning live on Supersport. Um, the, your other question is, what are the guys doing going through the divisions and going through the, the different championships? Well, it's what about money today as well. I mean, they, they throwing a lot of money at the sportsmen today. Money, yes, I understand. But... but I was hoping and I was maybe expecting a different kind of answer for you. The answer I was expecting is the challenge of fighting different fighters that they probably wouldn't get to fight, um, especially looking at what Mikey Garcia is doing, going up two weight divisions to take on someone which everybody that I've looked at has basically said Garcia is a class act, but there's just no ways he should be able to be a heavier, bigger man like Earl Spence Jr. Yeah, well, it's, it's tough because you, you never know. You know, a smaller man can beat a bigger man if he's good enough. 
and Garcia is good enough. You know, they, they, they phoned me from the States and asked me my opinion on the fight, and I said, I think Spencer won, but I think. I'm not, I'm not, I wouldn't put money on it, put it that way. Garcia's brilliant, Spencer's brilliant, and you just don't know in boxing. You know, they call it the sport of kings, and you, you never know what's going to happen in boxing, and that's what makes boxing so exciting. You know, one punch changes everything. Mike Tyson used to say, you know, guys came into the ring with a game plan and one left to change the game plan. And that's what makes boxing so exciting. So you really don't know. I, I can't even pick a winner there, but it's a great fight. Brian Mitchell, thank you so much for your time. I'm definitely going to be calling you. We're going to get you back in the studio. We're going to talk a lot more boxing, especially some of the big fights that are coming up still uh, left this year. Uh, thanks for your time. Thanks for being on World Sports Wrap. Thank you, Mark. I have the tiger. Absolutely. We're going to make sure we get there.